The Holy Spirit is the breath of breakthrough and the wind of heaven is blowing through your life right now. I truly believe that God wants to give you breakthrough in your life. God wants to give you breakthrough in your ministry. God wants to give you breakthrough in your prayer life, in your devotion to the word. That which is obstructing you, that difficult thing that is keeping you from going into the place that God has called you to go, that difficult thing that is blocking you from entering into the place of God's promise, that wall, that obstruction is about to come down because the Holy Spirit is the breath of breakthrough. We're recording a live edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV network, and I really want to minister this word to you. It's fresh from heaven, and I know it's going to bring deliverance to your life, and it's going to help you to get from here to there sooner than you believe possible. Something good is going to happen to you. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some anointed worship, and as he leads you in that worship, I want you just to surrender your heart to the Lord and give everything that you are to Him and ask Him to touch your life in a fresh way. And then after you're done worshiping, I'm going to get right into this message. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. Here I am waiting Abide in me Here I am longing for you Hide me in your love And bring me to my knees May I know Jesus more and more Come live in me Oh my life Take over Come breathe in me And I will rise on eagles wings come live in me oh my life take over come breathe in me and i will rise on eagles I want to talk to you about multiplication. You see, in your life, you're going to notice that there is a progress to your spiritual walk. There is movement to your spirituality. I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit, the breath of breakthrough. You see, in your life, you progress. My goal and what I tell myself is that I want to be more like Jesus today than I was yesterday. I want to be more like Jesus in this moment than I was in the last moment. And whereas faithfulness brings about spiritual progress, which is good, a move of the Holy Spirit or a breath from the mouth of God will bring about breakthrough. You see, faithfulness and consistency brings about progressive growth and addition to your spiritual walk. God adds to you as you remain faithful to Him. God adds to you as you remain obedient to His Word, walking in holiness, hearing His voice. God will add to you. But then there are special moments, pivotal seasons of life in which God will breathe upon a situation and it will go from addition to multiplication. It will go from progress to sudden and dramatic transformation. That is the difference between faithfulness and the miraculous. You see, anything that God blesses, He multiplies. Think about what He told Adam and Eve. He told them, be fruitful and multiply. When Jesus was pressed by the thousands who were hungry and the disciples were unable to buy them food, 
What did Jesus do? He took the bread, he took the fish, he blessed it, and it was multiplied so that everyone had their fill and there was an abundance left over. This is what God does. And so while we are to remain faithful and we, while we are to have things added to our spiritual walk and while we are to progress day to day, moment by moment, becoming more and more like Jesus, there are also moments when God will bring breakthrough and the miracle that you thought was far away, the miracle that you thought or imagined was at a distance is closer than you think. You see, when you progress at your current pace, you may tell yourself, well, it'll be a couple of years before I get there, or it'll be a few years before I get there, or maybe a couple months and down the line and I'll get that miracle I've been praying for. But the truth is that when breakthrough comes, the timeline goes out the window. Why? Because your pace changes. You go from the gradual progressions of day to day to the sudden breath of God bringing about breakthrough. Now, am I promising that your life will be perfect? No. Am I promising that you're going to have no trials? No. Am I saying that the gospel is all about you and what you can get and the riches that God has? No. We don't serve God for what he gives to us, but the reality is that God wants to bless his children. Now, he doesn't want us to put those blessings first. Those blessings should never become the center of the gospel. That's the prosperity gospel. The prosperity gospel says that the blessings are the center, that the riches are the center, that what I can get from him, that's the center of the will of God. But the truth is that sacrifice is at the center. My cross is at the center. Jesus said you have to pick up your cross if you want to follow him. And so I'm not promising something that's unrealistic or that the Bible doesn't declare. But I am saying that there are places that God wants to take you. There are breakthroughs that God wants to give you that will take you from where you are to where he wants you to be. And that suddenly will come upon you. You may say that is so far away. That's at a great distance. But if you will put your faith in God, the Holy Spirit will move in a way that you never imagined possible and your breakthrough will come. I want to go to Joshua chapter number six. I'm going to read just a few verses to you. Now, you've likely heard this portion of scripture and you've heard it preached many, many, many times. But what I want to do is bring a fresh perspective to this very familiar passage of scripture. Joshua chapter six, beginning at verse number one, the scripture says this. Now, the gates of Jericho were tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. No one was allowed to go in or out. But the Lord said to Joshua, I have given you Jericho, its king, and all its strong warriors. You and your fighting men should march around the town once a day for six days. Seven priests will walk ahead of the ark, each carrying a ram's horn. On the seventh day, you are to march around the town seven times with the priests blowing the horns. When you hear the priests give one long blast on the ram's horns, have all the people shout as loud as they can. Then the walls of the town will collapse and the people can charge straight into the town. Now, this is a very familiar portion of Scripture, but let me set the context here. The children of Israel are standing on the verge of entering into the promised land. All that God had promised to give to them was just on the other side of this wall. This wall of Jericho was a strong wall. They did not imagine that they could pass that wall, even if they were to try and overtake that wall, it would take them weeks, possibly months, maybe even years if the battle raged on long enough. And they realized that what they were up against was something that was strong. But the promise that God had gave them was even stronger. And so there they are, the promised land on the other side of the wall of Jericho. And God gives them this interesting instruction, a peculiar command, he tells them. I want you to march around the wall once a day for six days. And on the seventh day, I want you to march around that wall seven times. And when this happens, you're going to release a shout and the priest will blow the ram's horns and that will release a sound and the walls will come down. Now, I thought this was interesting because I thought, Lord, why not just give them a military strategy? or perhaps give them an army, or maybe some type of physical means by which they can take down the walls, maybe explosives. Maybe God could have given that to them. But that's not what God chose to do. 
Instead, he chooses to give them an interesting command. Why does God do that? Why does he give us peculiar commands that we don't understand? It's because God doesn't want you to figure him out. He wants you to trust him. God doesn't want you to have everything all figured out in your mind. He wants you to have faith. Only when you have faith does the power of God show up. And so here they are, instead of giving them an army, instead of giving them a strategy, he gives them a command. And they obey it and the walls come down. But what was it that took down the walls? Well, the Old Testament word for spirit is ruach. And ruach can mean spirit, wind, or breath. The New Testament Greek equivalent of the word ruach is pneuma. And pneuma means spirit, wind, or breath. You see, the Holy Spirit is the breath of God. He is the wind of heaven. Wherever you see wind or breath, look closely, for you may be looking at a symbolic representation of the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus said, when he breathed upon his disciples, receive ye the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came upon the church, the Bible says that his entrance was marked by the sound of a mighty rushing wind. That mighty rushing wind, that breath of God, that is the Holy Spirit. What was it that brought down these walls? It was not their shouts. It was not the blast on the ram's horns. What it was, was their breath or the Spirit of God being released into the situation to bring down the walls. You see, they didn't have to fight. They didn't have to battle. They didn't have to struggle. They just went in and did as God commanded, and obedience unlocks the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to say that again. Remember this. Obedience unlocks the power of the Holy Spirit. When they obeyed God, it was their faith that allowed them to do what seemed foolish, which released the breath of the Spirit, and the walls came down. The Holy Spirit can accomplish more in a single moment than all of our efforts can accomplish in over a hundred years. The Holy Spirit is much more efficient and much more effective and much more powerful. So that which is blocking you, you may be looking at it and saying, I don't know how I'm going to get on the other side of that. Well, I can tell you from experience as one who's been in the ministry for almost 16 years now, I can tell you that if you look at what God is doing, if you imagine that my ministry is successful, and I don't like to use those words because the world has perverted the term success when really I believe it just means obedience toward God and accomplishing His will. But if you imagine that this ministry is successful, I can tell you that I had nothing to do with it. In fact, if you were to ask me, how did that ministry get to this point? Or how are you reaching so many people? Or why is it so effective or efficient? Or how do you do things with such excellence? I can honestly tell you that though I do my small part in obeying God, though I give my best to the ministry, I can tell you with 100% certainty it has nothing to do with me. Everything God does in this ministry is not because of me. Trust me, it's despite me. He is faithful. He is good. And so I could tell you, if you say, Brother David, how do we get to that place in ministry? I have this one answer to give you. I don't know. I don't have a clue. Not without him. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. All I really know, and I'm being honest with you now, all I really know is that I obeyed God. All I really know is that I listen for his voice and I obey his voice. That's all I know. And he does the rest. There, are times in, there were times in my ministry where growth spurts came out of nowhere. I didn't change what I was doing. I didn't change my strategy or my method. I didn't try harder in this area or in that area. No. What happened was God just decided to breathe upon the ministry. And maybe that's where you are right now. You're wondering where your breakthrough will come from. You're wondering how the situation will change. You're wondering how you're going to get from here to there. Well, let me tell you something. With God, nothing is impossible. Only believe, I truly believe this, something good is going to happen to you. Breakthrough is closer than you think. Your miracle is closer than you think. That wall will come down and you will enter into the place of promise. I know it. I want to pray with you now because I can sense that faith is being stirred. But before I pray and as Stephen plays, I want to read this scripture to you. Matthew chapter 7. This is what the Bible says. And you need to hear this because some of you right now, in fact, there's somebody hearing this right now that needs this word. You need to hear what the Lord is saying. The scripture is very clear. Matthew chapter number 7. 
verse number seven. And as I read this, I want your heart to be open because many of us pray and then we stop or we'll pursue God and we'll stop or we'll quit or we'll give up. This is what Jesus said. This is Jesus talking now. This is what he said. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. It's the breath of God that brought down those walls. And when the children of Israel were crossing through the Red Sea, it was the breath of God that split that sea. Do you realize that the breath of God caused the water to become like walls and it caused the walls to fall like water? The breath of God makes a way where there seems to be no way. That's all you need. You don't need to try this or that. Sure, give your best. Sure, do all you can. Absolutely. But in the end, all you need is God to breathe. I want you to say this. Lift your hand and say, Lord, breathe on my life and on my ministry. Come on, begin to ask him right now because there's nothing we can do in our own strength. It's going to be him. Lift your hands and say, Lord, breathe upon me. Breathe upon me. Father, I pray for that one receiving this now. And I ask, Lord, for the breath of God to blow in their life and in their ministry. Touch their minds and their hearts, Lord. Heal those who need a healing in their body. I rebuke sickness now in the name of Jesus. I want you to say it because you agree. Say amen. And as Steve continues to play, I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. And if you'd like information on how you can join the Spirit family, I'll tell you what you get. You get a free email from me every single Sunday. Well, every Sunday, depending upon your time zone. But I send it out on Sunday, my time. I send it really early in the morning, like 4.30 a.m. my time on Sundays. But in that Sunday morning email, you're going to get a fresh word, fresh revelation. You'll get a worship song from Stephen Moctezuma. This is every Sunday. And on top of that, you'll be able to reply to that email for prayer support from our ministry staff. And if that's not good enough, you'll be joining almost 4,000 members. Spirit Church is now 4,000 members almost strong. And you'll be joining them from all over the world. You'll be joining that family. We refer to them affectionately as the Spirit Family. So join today, davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. It's absolutely free. I'm going to read your comments now from last week's video. And this is called The Act of Faith. And this teaching, I believe, stirred faith in many of you. And so I'm going to read your comments from last week's video. This is what they say. Amen, Ophelia writes, Amen, your messages are powerful and I'm consumed by them. Thank you and may God continue to empower you more. I will take the bold step to act in faith. Katia writes, Wow, this was so good. I know God is just leading you. This speaks powerfully to me. Glory to God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Another commenter writes, Glory to God. Thank you for this message. I receive spiritual guidance. Powerful message. Mathia Marquez writes, Amen. May God richly bless you for the work you endure for him. In faith, I now have the courage to preach the word of God. Thanks. And the final comment comes from Trumpet of God, who writes, Thank you, Brother David. The Lord always seems to lead me to just the right message at just the right time. Thank you and your whole team for getting the true message of the gospel out to a world that desperately needs to receive it. I will continue to pray to see your very unique ministry grow to new heights. I believe the Lord is about to do amazing works through his church very soon. I am so thankful he has sent us ministers such as yourself. Well, thank you so much for your comments. If you would like me to read your comment next week, go ahead, don't forget to leave a comment here. I wanna to talk to you now real quick, just for a second. Maybe you're watching this and you're saying, I need breakthrough in my ministry. I need breakthrough in my life. I need breakthrough in my finances. Perhaps you're a pastor or a minister or an evangelist or someone who wants to go into the ministry and you have your projects and those things that you want to get started. Well, I found that the best way to see breakthrough in your own ministry is to sow into someone else's ministry. I found that the best way to receive breakthrough in finances is to sow financially into ministries. 
Now again, I'm not a proponent of the gospel or the prosperity gospel. I believe the true gospel, the pure gospel. Christ crucified, resurrected, repentance from sin, carry your cross, sacrifice, give your life. I believe in all of that. But the truth is that the Bible does teach. There's no getting around it. That there is provision that God gives to his children. That lack is not his, there, his will for his children. Am I saying everyone's going to be a millionaire? By no means. But the Bible does promise that your needs will be met and that you'll be able to take care of the needs of others. That's prosperity to me. So well, while money is not the center of the gospel, I don't serve God for what he can give to me. I'm just a servant. I, I, if, if all he ever did was save me, that's more than enough. But the truth is that in God's economy, the way he works is through giving. So I'm going to encourage you. You're saying, I want to do a project, or I want to be in ministry, or I want God to bless what I have going, or I need a job or a promotion or this or that. Sow into another ministry and ask God to bless that. Now again, that's not your focus, but that's how it works. So I want to encourage you, give into this ministry. We have a very simple focus in ministry. We win souls and we build believers through events and media. It's just that simple. If you'll sign up to become my monthly supporter, that is, you sign up to give an automatic gift every single month. If you sign up to become a partner at $30 or more a month, I got a gift for you. This is my initiation gift. I will send you either Carriers of the Glory, 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare, or Encountering the Holy Spirit in Every Book of the Bible. Those three books are available to those of you who will say, I want to sign up. I want to support. I want to become a monthly partner. If you can't become a monthly supporter, that's okay. Give a one-time gift. Some of you can give a one-time gift of $5, of $10. There are some watching right now, I believe God is moving on your heart. You can give $1,000. There are people watching, I know for a fact, who could give $10,000, $100,000. So into the ministry. If Look, you're not watching this by accident. God has obviously brought you to this place. You've heard the word, something was sparked in you. Now act, sow into the ministry, give today, not so that you can be blessed, but so that we can continue to take these resources and preach the gospel. I don't live a luxurious life. Steve doesn't live a luxurious life. All we do is take the finances and put it into spreading the gospel. That's what we do. And so I want you to become my partner or give a one-time gift. I really do believe there's someone watching You can give one of those large amounts I was talking about, and it'll go toward many, many of the things that we're doing. Building a TV network. We're doing more events than ever before. We're building a television studio here in Southern California, and we're winning souls. That's what it's all about. We don't give to be blessed. We give so the gospel can go forward. So do that today. If you're watching this on YouTube, use the links, one of the links in the description. If you're watching this on... um, the app basically you're going to wait for the video to disappear and if you're watching this anywhere else you're going to use the information at the bottom of the screen in fact i believe the last 20 seconds of this video will be clickable and so do that now you'll see a red button appear right now right above me that is it for this edition of spirit church here on the encounter tv network until next time remember nothing is impossible with god thank you for watching encounter tv Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.